Hello everybody, Toreno here, and welcome to another episode of my International Tank Tech Tree series. This is the um, first proper episode I'm doing on the series. Um, the last episode was just a quick introductory episode, uh, answering some questions, that sort of stuff, um, and I'll link you to that episode. But in this first, ep first proper episode, we'll be looking at Argentinian tanks during World War II. Now, before we um, get onto the tanks, I'll just give a quick background of Argentina during the war. Um, they were neutral for most of the war. Um, they only declared war in some like March 1945, so right at the last minute, really. Um, you know, they didn't really get involved as such. Uh, there was a lot of pressure put on them to declare war earlier by the Allies, um, but there was also... They were going through some difficulties. They had quite a few coups. Uh, I think there were some in the military who were kind of sympathetic to the German military, and, you know... They just decided to stay neutral, it wasn't really worth their time, but because of this, like I said, they had a lot of pressure put on them by the Allies, and I think they had some sort of military blockade, or they weren't allowed to get military equipment from the Allies, um, so they had to develop their own, which is, um, you know, the tanks we're looking at today. So, so hopefully that just gives you a quick uh, rundown of Argentina during that period of time, um, so let's get straight into the episode. Now the first Argentinian tank we're looking at is the Nahal DL-43 medium tank, um, apologies if I've mispronounced it. Basically the Argentinians needed some modern tanks, um, couldn't get them from the Allies or America, so they decided to build their own. Uh, the designer, if I'm reading this right, was the Lieutenant Colonel Alfredo Bas ba uh, Basi, um, again apologies if I've mispronounced it, I think that's him in the commander's hatch. Um, and the tank turned out reasonably good, I mean... It kind of looks like a Sherman. Um, from what I understand, it was inspired by the Sherman or influenced by it, but, you know, it's not a copy. But stats-wise, it's, um... Well, I've had to rely on internet sources, unfortunately, but the stats do look quite good. Um, well, the armament's not great. It's a Krupp model 1909 75mm gun. Now, 1909, as some of you may know, is before tanks were invented, so it's obviously not particularly designed with anti-tank anti work in mind. Um, as far as I can tell, it's just a bog-standard uh, artillery piece. Uh, it's got a muzzle velocity of 546 metres a second. I believe that's a bit um, more than the Panzer IV's gun. And I think it's a length 30. The Panzer IV's gun's about length 24. So it should be better, Should be slightly better than the Panzer IV. The Panzer IV um, penetrates 43mm of, uh, of armour at 100 metres. This has a slightly longer barrel length and slightly more muzzle velocity, something like 100 metres a second, so should maybe 50 to 60 millimetres at 100 metres? I, I don't know. There wasn't really any stats for it online, unfortunately, because it was never really used in the anti armour role. I think it also had something like four machine guns. I um, don't know where they'd all go, though. One in the bow, one in the coaxial position, one on the commander's hatch, but. The fourth one, I have no idea where that would go. Armour is actually pretty damn good. Um, 80 millimetres of armour max. Um, I don't know what the minimum is, unfortunately. Um, and it does. It's reasonably sloped all over. I mean, even the sides, which I don't think the Sherman is. So it's actually superior to the Sherman in that way, um, possibly. Um, you know, I think this is quite reasonably protected, um, which you know is very good. Um, it kind of surprised me when I first found out about this tank. Um, speed apparently is 25 miles per hour on the road, um, and it has five crew members, a commander, gunner, loader, driver, and surprisingly a co-driver. I don't know if that, they would man a bow machine gun position. I'm not even sure if there is actually a bow machine gun position. I can't really tell from some of these pictures. Um, you know, I'm just sort of guessing. Um, unfortunately, this tank was never actually used that much. I, I think something like between, between 10 and 20 were built, and then by this time the war was over, they joined the Allies and they could a get access to the cheap surplus Sherman tanks, so they bought them instead. Now where would I put this tank in War Thunder? Uh, it's really hard to decide, I mean I've put it tier 2 because of the thick armour and reasonably large gun, but battle rating, um, it's got this, it's got thicker armour than the KV-1 because it slopes and it's 80mm thick, KV-1's at 37 with 75mm armour, but it's got a gun similar to the Panzer for F1, which is um battle rating of 2.3. Um, so I'd put this at, I don't know, 2.7? Uh, 3? Um, it's really hard to decide. It's got a not very good gun, but it's got ridiculously good armour, so probably 2.7, just to be fair. I think the Sherman's a 3.7 uh, around there. So yeah, that would be a good place for it to go, I think. Uh, um, you know, t high tier, um, tier 2, battle rating around 2.7 to 3. 
And I think it would be a very, very good tank in War Thunder. It's a pretty unusual tank. It's, the only problem is I don't know the stats of that gun very well, unfortunately. So, you know, um, that's the only problem, really. But I think it would be a very good tank to have in the game. Now, the next vehicle I don't have that much information about, unfortunately. Um, it's the, uh, if I can find the name, TG4M42. Basically, it's a British Crusader tank converted into an artillery tractor and then sold to the Argentinians, who converted it into a self-propelled gun. Unfortunately for me, it used some like three different guns, so that makes it hard to confirm which um, version to be added in. Uh, the guns were the 75mm 1909 field gun, like with the Nahal, um, a French 105mm Schneider Crusot MLE 1928 howitzer, um, Sorry if I pronounced any of this wrong again. Uh, but apparently there was a modern version with a 75mm length 40 Bofors gun. Um, I don't know which version to have, have in the game. I have no idea what the stats are of these guns. Um, high explosive shells um, are, you know, quite powerful in game. But I don't know what the, they would be like for these guns in particular. I also don't know if they were given an armour piercing round or not. So, you know, I can't really tell you how well they'd do against enemy tanks, unfortunately. Armour, um... The Crusader tanks uh, had different armour depending on the marks. The Mark 1 had 40mm, the Mark 2 had something like 50 So between 40 and 50mm, depending on which version was turned into the artillery tractor. Uh, speed, before it was converted, was something like 15 miles per hour off-road, 26 miles per hour on-road. That may change, you know, getting the turret removed and stuff like that, being turned into an artillery tractor and then into a self-propelled gun. Uh, crew, I've heard it's something like 5 crew. I, I don't know what they'd all do. Um, I'm assuming something like driver, commander, gunner, loader, and maybe a radio operator or something like that. So where would I put this vehicle in War Thunder? I'm not really sure. I've put it tier 3, though, as I've mentioned before. It's the battle rating that matters. And the M4A3, um, already in-game with the 105mm howitzer, could do something like 28mm of penetration. But the Panzer IV 75mm could do only 12 So. Depending if we get the 105mm version, it could do okay, but if we get the 75mm gun version, it may do a lot less. Um, it depends if we've got an armor-piercing round or um, high-explosive anti-tank. Um, I think the M4A3 is at 4.7, so 4.7 as a max, possibly all the way down to battle rating of 3, depending on, you know, all the different factors. At the end of the day, until we get I get the stats for the um, guns used, I'm, it's going to be very hard to give an accurate uh, battle rating, unfortunately. So now that we've seen what vehicles Argentina could potentially bring to the international tank tech tree, where could Argentina fit into the game events-wise uh, for realistic or simulator battles? Um, it would have to be alternate history, because, like I said, they didn't join the war until very late, so they never saw combat, these vehicles. Um, it would, so it would have to be an alternate history. Uh, there's a few different things that could be done. Uh, could be Argentina coming in on the side of the Allies a lot earlier. So, you know, being seen in the uh, European battles and attacking the Japanese, that sort of stuff, when the Japanese are added in uh, for tank battles. Uh, they, they could potentially come on the side of the Germans. Apparently they had plans to invade the Falkland Islands, so you could do an excuse to fight the, you know, Allies feed the Argentinians. Or on the side of the Germans. Uh, you could also do maybe the Germans or Japanese of one world or two are and are invading South America and they're all teaming up to fight off the Axis powers. You could also have um, similar events with the Allies or Russians invading South America for whatever reason and possibly even fictional uh, South American wars being introduced uh, which could you know give an excuse for these vehicles to be used against other South American nations. You know there's quite a few different possibilities. Um, overall, I think Argentina and the vehicles it produced would be quite good for the international tank tech tree. Um, I hadn't heard of these vehicles before. Well, I'd heard of the Crusader ones when I did my British tank tech tree, but I hadn't heard of the Narhal. Um, so, you know, it's a pretty good tank, and, you know, I've, despite the slightly weak gun, I think it would be a very good tank for the game. Um, although, of course, there would be a lot of complaints about that armour in the forums, so... Always a downside to everything, but yeah, ultimately I'd like to see these vehicles added into an international tank tech tree, if possible. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Um, sorry if it's a bit shorter than some of my usual episodes, but with only two vehicles to cover, I can't really drag out the episode for too long. Um, 
In the next episode I'll be looking at some of the Australian vehicles that could potentially go on an international tank tech tree if they weren't included in a Commonwealth tech tree or the British tech tree, so I hope you'll stick around to watch that episode. But yeah, um, leave a like if you did like the episode, um, subscribe if you like these sorts of videos, leave feedback, could always do with more feedback. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.